Hello there modders, welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to teach you how to install the new modding tools for the game Kingdom Come Deliverance. I've already had an epic time with this game and I'm so hyped that finally we got to play around with the modding tools. So of course, first make sure that you have the game installed. If we go to Steam, um, then to properties, we can navigate to the files where the game is installed. We'll need this folder for later. Beside that, we are also going to need uh, some other tools, some third-party tools. Uh, the game uses a database system where all the data is installed of the game. And to actually use the editor, we're going to need to install some tools from another website. So this is PostgreSQL. And this is going to be the server that's going to be running on your computer while you're editing. The links will be in the description, of course. And if we navigate to the download section, then to Windows, and then you see different versions here, but the links are actually, if you go to download the installer, and according to the devs, we'll have to install, not install the newest version 12, but we have to install version 11, because otherwise we're going to run into some errors. So go do that, I already did that. There's another tool we need, uh, links is, link is in the description as well. That's a little driver. We can download it if we click this link and then go to Microsoft Installer and we choose, I think we need to choose the 11 version as, of this as well. So we're going to choose the 64-bit version and download that as well. I already did that, of course. So then... If we look in this folder, um, we have the the three things. Oh, I, I forgot the most important thing, of course, which is the files themselves, the modding files. So the link will also be in the description to uh, the page where you can download those files. Uh, let me get them from here. So from Nexus Mods, um, we'll have the official downloading tools. Um, you can you can download them from the Nexus mod side. You go to files and then manual download and we'll download the file. It's quite big. It's I think four and a half gigabytes. So it's, it's here. So it might take a while depending on your internet connection before you'll have the files download. So we have all the files here. Um, you can unpack the driver file so you'll get the installer. We have the installer for Postgres and we'll unpack the modding tools. So first, before we do anything, we'll have to copy over the modding tools to the installation file. So we just open the folder of the, the game install location, and then we'll open the just the, everything we just unpacked. We select everything and drag and drop this in the file. I'm not going to do that now because I already did it and I will get an error with overriding. So back at the download location where we downloaded the files, we're going to run the PostgreSQL installer. And we'll just install it in the default folder, uh, use all the things that ship with the installer. Data folder is also fine. You can change this. Wait, I am going to change this to a different location because I don't want it to install on my SSD. You can do that and it might be a little faster. But I want it in my uh, documents folder. SQL data access installed there. So now we're going to need uh, to set up a password for the super user. And this password we're going to need later on as well for uh, running the database. So it's important to uh, set him. I'm go just going to set it to Henry, no case. Just to us any password, but be sure to save and remember this password because you can only need it later on. Port is fine. Uh, local, default local is all fine. And let's install this. All right, we're not going to launch the stack builder, so we're going to finish it like this. Then we install this driver, should be a short install. Install, don't, don't need any documentation, install, very short and done. 
So now we need to go to the admin panel of Postgres. We can launch that from the start menu. If you type pg admin, you launch that and it should start the server and also open the admin panel. All right, and we're going to enter the same password as in the installer. And now we have the default database, which also needs that same password. Okay, and now we're going to make a new database. So we have the databases here, and the default database is already installed, but we're going to need to create a new one. And this database name is very important because it's already uh, used in the game. So we're going to name it configdb and we don't need to install anything else. The owner is default owner. And then we go into configdb, we go into extensions and we're going to create a new extension. And this extension needs to be called name you you all right there it is and we're going to save that so that's all we need to set up in the admin panel now we have to go to do some command line stuff i have the links here in a notepad file and they're also supplied in the video description and we're going to have to replace these placeholders with the actual install locations I already navigated to the PostgreSQL install location, so I'll copy this and paste it into here. Just make sure you don't replace the actual quote marks because otherwise Windows will have problems reading the file line. And then we'll copy the game file location in here. All right, now we're going to open the command line by typing cmd in the start menu and we're going to copy the first line of, of code into the command line and press enter and then we enter the password that we set up i typed that wrong there we go all right and we're done executing the first line now we'll execute the second line. It's going to install the second database. And use the password again. And that one is way shorter. All right. And now for the third line, we're first going to have to set up some extra things. And this is important because it's going to uh, help with the compatibility between different mods. So. In a database, every entry has numbers, and for certain numbers, it increases by one every time a new entry is made. So for things like dialogues or items, you're going to have to need entries in the database. It's going to be made by the game, so you don't have to worry about it. But to make sure that your mod doesn't clash with other mods, uh, you need to make sure that your val values are different. And in the explanation by the devs, they say that the number needs to be higher than a hundred thousand hundred thousand um, but also that it needs to be different so you need a number that's not likely to be chosen by someone else to help with that i actually uh, made a forum thread in which you can claim an id range i started it at uh, under two thousand and if you claim the name like i did here then you'll get a thousand free ids so the next claim will always be a thousand more so that every mod project you start or, or, or setup you have gets a thousand free id lines that won't clash with anybody else so if you plan on making a mod with a dialogue in it or items then register id you don't need it if you're only going to make a visual like a color grading mods or stuff because you won't edit the database um, so claim post in here with your new ID. I'll be sure to check every day and update this list uh, with the IDs. Uh, also check 
the thread if someone already claimed an ID, but it's not updated yet. So, all right. So the ID that I claimed is uh, 111,000. So we're going to enter that ID uh, in a file. The file is located in the game data folder. Data references to be precise. precise. Um, we're going to have to edit sequences.sql. So we'll click edit and it opens a notepad. And then we'll search for the file 10,578. And we're going to replace that by the ID that we just claimed and save the file. And then we can run the command, which will use that exact file to uh, initiate that database. So we're going to paste this in here and run it, enter the password and done. All right, so that's all the databases installed. Now there's one thing we need to do and that is that we need to tell the game which passwords to use. There are two places in which these passwords are entered. One of them, if we go back to the game files, is a, is a, registry, a registry entry. And they always already set up a script to enter these in your uh, registry. But we need to add the password. So we're going to edit this file. Don't double click it yet, just edit it. And replace this by the password that you chose for your database. Save it and then double click it. It's going to run. It might ask you for a administrator confirmation because you're going to edit stuff in your registry. Always check the files. If you're running registry files from the internet, always check inside if it's not doing weird stuff because this can break your computer if, or like be dangerous to your computer if there's stuff in it that shouldn't be. But this all seems to be fine. It's just changing stuff for Postgres or SQL. So let's go continue files are added to the registry so that's fine and then there's one other place where we're going to need to add the password and that is in the the main folder where we have user.config i'm going to open it with notepad and also here we have password and we also change it to the password that we used so save that and that should be all the files so now everything is installed and we can try to run the editor we're going to bin uh, win64 release.dl oh, without the dot and go to editor.x. Always make sure that if you are going to run the editor, that the database is running first. And you do that by running the pg admin, and that will um, start the database. And you can see if it's running if this little elephant in the corner is on. So this is the CryEngine uh, sandbox editor that, that we use to edit the levels and edit mods. And we'll go more into depth into how to make mods and what to do with it and others. I just want to show you a little important thing that I took me a while to figure out. So if we open uh, the map of the game, uh, we'll see that we have a list of warnings. And I have no idea if this is going to be a problem later on or if the devs uh, we'll address this, so we'll leave it at this for now. Uh, be sure to check the forums for any uh, updates on that, but we're just going to ignore it for now. Um, but now we'll see that the world is quite empty, so we can fly around in the world using the WSD keys and the right mouse button to turn your camera. And the world is completely empty, so you might wonder where is all the stuff. We can see the places where the villages are, villages are supposed to be, but there's nothing. So it took me a while to figure out, but actually uh, the editor has layers that are by default not all loaded. And this is a good thing because the game world is quite big and depending on your system, you might have a bit of a problem running it. You can see it's now running at 120 FPS. As soon as we load in things, it's going to drop. And so if we go to this roll bar on the side, we can click on this layer icon and we'll see all the different layers that are possible to load. 
So one of the first that I uh, always load is the comment layer. If we click on it, it will load. And this gives you a few comments of locations in the game so you can easily navigate and realize where the different towns are. And you can also hide and unhide it without unloading it by clicking this little eye icon. And another one that I load is the Uber LODs. It's not really necessary, but it gives you a little bit prettier uh, world to look at than the empty maps. And it's going to load all the di trees in the distance. All right. And you can see it's all loading in. So you can see that if we come close by, it disappears. Uh, but in a the distance, these things stay visible. So now the world is a little more attractive to look at. But it is, it is affecting uh, FPS, so if your system is not great enough, then possibly not load these LODs. Another thing we can load over here is the skybox, and that's going to give us clouds and a distant field. So now you have a better idea of what the world uh, looks like. All right, and it's all loaded in now. So now we have a basic idea of where all the towns are. But if we now want to uh, load in one of the villages, we're actually going to have, oh, and let's do the rivers first. So we have here, and we'll load in the rivers. It should also be pretty quick. So now we have actually water in the rivers. And if we now run the town, so I'm so bad with these check names. So Zava, so Zava town we click load it might take a while because it's now loading on all the houses and towns and all the items and helpers and let's disable the uber LEDs so we can only see a town so now it's loading in all the different buildings of this town and we can change them place things edit things and whatever for your mod So that's a short overview of the different settings, uh, the installation of the mod files. I hope this helps. Uh, if you have any questions, post them down in the comments or po better yet, post them in the modding forums so other people can always also answer them. And be sure to uh, check out the modding forums to see if there are any news on changes, on updates, on the tools. and Let's go modding! Thanks for watching this tutorial. I'll be making more videos in the future about modding, mods I'm working on, and things I learned with the editor. For me, it's all new. I haven't worked with a CryEngine before, so it's very interesting what I figure out. And it's basically a journey we'll go on together. You can find me on the forums, or you can follow me on this uh, YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe if new videos upload. I also do other historical modeling and 3D art, and of which I will upload videos in the future. You can also find me on ArtStation or on Twitter, and I'll provide the links to that in the description. Even on Instagram, I'm also on Instagram. I always forget these things. Anyway, I will see you next time. Goodbye.